I asked you guys on Instagram to give me your unpopular hamster opinions. When it comes to hamster care, not everything is always going to be black and white. There are gray areas and each and every one of us have our own experiences and we form our own opinions on certain things based off of those things. And it's okay to have an opinion and it doesn't necessarily mean that one person is right or one person is wrong. And it's really healthy and good to have debates about certain topics because then maybe your opinion might change and you might see it from a different view of somebody else or maybe they're going to see your point of view different and then change their opinion or learn a little bit about something. Maybe you have more information on that certain thing and they don't. So I thought I would read through some of your unpopular hamster opinions and then I would also give my opinion and how I feel about that certain thing. So let's get started. The first one is hamsters can be very expensive pets and you can easily spend over $500 for care and I completely agree with this. Hamsters really should not be considered cheap pets. Of course, there are always ways for almost every pet to find cheaper supplies or just DIY things and make it cheaper, but that doesn't necessarily mean the pet itself is going to be cheaper to care for. I see often a lot of people who will critique an expensive large cage that is $200 to $300 and they're like, why is this so expensive for a hamster? But the same people will spend the same amount of money on a dog crate where the dog is only going to be in the crate for a short period of time. When a hamster is going to be living in that enclosure for the majority of its life, why is there such a difference in this is expensive but I'm willing to spend it on this animal? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. The next one is, I think bathtub bonding isn't a good taming method, it's too stressful. So I actually disagree with this and I know there's quite a few people who may not agree with the bathtub bonding type of method, but I think it comes down to the hamster. Some may find it stressful and in that case then I probably would avoid using the bathtub, but in other cases the hamster may be fine and I don't quite see how it's different from just using a regular playpen than the bathtub. For some people they can't find a good play pen that's gonna not have them escape so a bathtub can work really well sometimes um, i tamed my roboroski dwarf in a bathtub and it just made things a lot easier because she wasn't going to escape i could sit in there with her and she was not stressed so i think it just comes down to the hamster but that's my opinion that you don't need to be able to handle your hamster to have a connection I do agree with this. I know there's some people who may believe that handling your hamster every day is necessary, but I think it comes down to the hamster itself. Lenny, for example, is a great example. He does not want anything to do with me ever, and he makes sure that I know that. And he would not benefit from me trying to handle him daily. He would not enjoy that. So I'm not going to force that upon them. So just because I don't handle him daily doesn't necessarily mean I don't have a connection with him. I still do see him once in a while and I'll offer him a treat and he'll gladly take it, but I don't handle him daily and he is, he's okay. Water bottles are better than water bowls. So I actually don't have an opinion on this. I think whatever you choose is fine. Both are good water sources for hamsters, but I personally choose to use water bowls for my hamsters because I've noticed it's much easier for them to drink as much water as they want compared to a bottle. If you've ever tried to drink out of a hamster bottle, I recommend trying it because you'll notice it takes a lot of time to get the amount of water you want out and for me just a water dish has just been easier and all of the hamsters that i have had learned it right away there was no doubt in their mind they just they know how to drink water dogs and hamsters could get along well if trained i disagree with this one as much as you can train your dog and it is good to train your animal to maybe not be reactive to other animals, I disagree with letting them interact with each other because once again, we don't speak animal. We can't talk to them. We can only read their body language and it takes five seconds for you to not recognize a body language sign and for something to happen and then you're going to regret it terribly. And the two animals, they don't get anything out of it. You have this tiny little 
antisocial rodent and a dog who likes communicating with dogs and there's there's no connection natural setups are better than colorful ones so I disagree with this and while I personally I like the look of a natural enclosure with natural colors and such I'm also not opposed to someone who enjoys color and has natural colored products hamsters they can't see the same way we do so if you're putting in like maybe pink themed enrichment they're not going to be able to tell it is it comes down kind of to an owner type of thing this enclosure right here is not considered to be a natural enclosure but it still is suitable and enriching to the hamster so i think what's important is that they're provided the enrichment plastic shouldn't be used in an enclosure so I actually disagree with this one, and this is not me saying that I think that enclosures should be all plastic. I don't agree with that, but I do believe that if you have one or two plastic items, it's not a huge deal, especially if you know your hamster and they're not chewing it. If they are chewing it, that needs to be removed ASAP. But there are also maybe other reasons someone may want to use a plastic accessory over a natural one. Um, one being if you are treating your hamster for mites, maybe they're in a quarantine cage. It is much easier to sanitize plastic items every day than wooden items. And for rescues, for example, I think plastic items are a little bit easier for them if they're taking in a lot of hamsters and they need a lot of accessories and they need to change them out all the time. It's much easier to give a plastic item a quick rinse and wash than waiting for wood to bake in the oven. But I also do agree. I think that plastic items aren't the best for enrichment and natural items are way better if you are trying to give your hamster good enrichment, which is really important. The current North American minimum is way too small. So I actually agree with this. <gasps> if you may notice in my newer videos, I avoid talking about minimum sizes and I avoid trying to talk about 450 square inches. And instead I give my own recommended cage size that I recommend people aiming for. Because personally, once you have a 450 square inch enclosure, you are going to notice you are not able to fit all of the proper enrichment you need to keep a hamster happy and a lot of hamsters aren't satisfied in a cage that size so i agree with you they are priced way too low for what they are worth and all the care they require i completely agree with this statement i actually believe that hamsters should not be sold at such a low cost a lot of people can get hamsters for such a cheap price 25 dollars for an entire animal or in some countries, I know they can get them for like $2, $5. That is way too low of a price. And that means anybody can buy them. If hamsters were more towards the price of $50 to $100, a lot less people would be trying to own them because people consider that a higher price. So I personally think it would, be, it would better hamsters so much if they costed more money. Hamsters are more content slash happier with good care without human interaction. So this is sort of similar to the other one we kind of talked about, but I actually disagree just a little bit because it kind of depends on context. Some hamsters crave human interaction and they love their owner and they want to interact with you and they always want to come out and be with you. And I think those hamsters, if they were completely left alone, I do think they would be stressed out. So I think it does come down to the hamster itself, like Lenny. He doesn't like human interaction, so instead I just give him the proper care he needs and he, he doesn't get that daily human inter interaction because he doesn't want it. But if a hamster wants it, I think that's perfectly fine. So these two are pretty similar, so I'm just gonna put them together, but it is possible that hamsters can live happily in pairs and cohabitation needs to be more normalized for experienced keepers. And with peace and love, I disagree with you both. <laughs> hamsters have been observed in 
the wild has pretty solitary animals even the dwarfs that we see that are commonly called social really are not and it's actually a lot different in the wild compared to captivity in captivity we obviously can't own a male and a female because that's going to result in a lot of babies <laughs> and we don't need that so it's not exactly the most natural thing to have two of the same sex dwarf hamsters living together because they actually would not do that in the wild and in the wild they live together for two reasons and that's reproduction and survival so for that reason i just i don't agree with housing dwarf hamsters together at all i just think they do much better and they do do fine living by themselves and even the most experienced hamster owner which to be experienced in it that means you'd have to own a pair at least once but then if you're owning a pair once technically maybe you're not experienced until you owned one <laughs> but even the most experienced hamster owner isn't going to be able to watch them 24 7 because hamsters are nocturnal slash crepuscular and they burrow you don't know what they're doing in their burrows or how they're reacting to each other until sometimes you just you finally see it or you wake up with something worse you shouldn't shame someone if they bought their hamster from a pet store so i do agree with this i don't think there is any point to telling someone who's bought in their hamster from a pet store already that they're bad or they're a horrible person i think it's okay to tell them why it's not good and maybe for the future how they could avoid going to a pet store but i also at the same time people who already know that pet stores are bad and they continue to support them a lot of people say that oh the pet store is my only option that's not your only option you don't have to own a hamster i assume for most of us pet mills and watching how pet mills work is against our morals so not exactly great to continue supporting that if you're against it. Sand baths need to cover at least one fourth of the cage, no matter the species, and one third for robos. So I actually disagree with this. And if anything, I think robos would need more sand than the other species because their natural environment would be sand compared to the other species but i also don't think that every hamster needs that much sand because not every hamster is actually going to enjoy their sand bath i have seen some who don't necessarily like their sand baths um, and some just don't tend to use it quite as much so for that case, I think it would be okay to give them a smaller one. I think every hamster that is healthy needs to have at least some sort of sand bath, but I don't think it needs to cover a certain area because then maybe they don't use it that much or they don't enjoy it that much. Then you're taking up that space that could be used for different enrichment. These next two are also very similar. People under 13 shouldn't own hamsters and they are bad pets for children. So I do agree that hamsters are not good pets for children. After owning them for 11 years, I've come to the realization that a dog or cat is a much better pet for a child starting out learning responsibility. But I don't agree with that people under 13 shouldn't own hamsters because I have seen children who are more responsible than adults are and more capable of caring for their pets than some adults are. So I don't necessarily think there should be an age limit. And I also do think that it comes down to parents. A parent who is letting their child get a pet and then making them take all of the responsibility, that is not a good situation. I also think it's okay if say a parent wants to get a hamster for the family, but the parent is going to be doing the majority of the care and teaching the children how to be gentle and careful and care for the hamster properly but a lot of parents don't do that so that's how i feel providing the minimum size is still proper care and owners who can provide more shouldn't shame them so i do agree with this i don't think 
anybody should really be shaming someone who is providing the minimum because minimums are there for a reason. Um, definitely people should focus on more people that are doing less than minimum, but for new owners or someone who has just learned about proper hamster care, it's perfectly fine for you to not have to get everything at once and that's definitely not a reasonable thing to think. It can take months for someone to slowly improve their care and that's perfectly fine. Um, at the same time though, I do believe if someone with minimum care comes to you and asks, well my hamster is doing this and they're chewing the bars and they're stressed, then they do need to look into upgrading their enclosure because that is the signs the hamster is showing. And lastly, the bigger the enclosure, the better. So I'm gonna disagree with this one because I often used to think this a lot and promote this a lot, like the bigger the enclosure, it's way better, which in some aspects, yes it is, because the bigger the enclosure, obviously the more space, the more space you have to put more enrichment, more enrichment, that's great. But a lot of people don't focus on enrichment, they just focus on bigger is better. But enrichment plus a big enclosure is what we need to focus on. Because a bigger cage with zero enrichment is just as bad as a small cage in my opinion. Enrichment is super important. So we need to focus on those two key points rather than just saying bigger is always going to be better because not necessarily. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and hearing my opinions on these topics. Feel free to let me know what your opinions are on these topics and don't forget, be friendly and be kind to each other. And thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Opinion. Sadie. Hamster. Sadie. So we kind of, Sadie. And Sadie won't stop meowing. Why are you making that noise? You're weird. Hamsters are more content slash happier without good care. Oh, without. <laughs> Whoops. I knew it! Oh my goodness, every time I film. <gasps> Why you gotta mow the lawn?